Viewers and subscribers, welcome back to Beating the Press Podcast. I am your host, Rafa. Now, coming up in today's podcast, we're going to be reviewing the weekend's action quite a bit to dissect and break down. And of course, big results over the weekend. Arsenal going down to Newcastle and Manchester United and Chelsea. That was another mouth-watering match. Now, of course, joining me this evening to review these matches, we have returned into the podcast, Sir Cole. Blessings, everyone. Pleasure to be back. We also have returned into the podcast, Christoph. Good to be back, viewers. Yes, indeed, gents. Yes, indeed. Quite a bit of football action taking place over the weekend. Lots to digest. Lots to take in. Sir Cole, we're going to kick things off over there at Old Trafford. What can we make of this Manchester United team? Are we seeing a rejuvenated squad under new management, Ruud van Nistelrooy? The result would suggest that. I don't think many persons a week ago would have thought that money would have come away, even, even with that point, and possibly getting um more. Uh, the absence of Ten Hag uh, really has created a positive effect um, so far. They have really looked at different units, especially attacking-wise. And it's really like a breath of fresh air that's passed into the squad at this moment, I think. Ah, definitely the new coach bones seem to be in full effect, it seems. And uh, only a pity Ruud van Nistara won't be getting the job, but it is a new man that has been now been confirmed, Sir Cole. Uh, Sporting Lisbon coach, is it? Over yes, there in perfect. Portugal? So, so I made to, uh, to understand, yes. What's your early impression? Uh, is he the man to take the club forward or are we seeing a, a Ten Hag reincarnation? Well, we really don't know. The, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Um, we have looked forward to every new manager who is coming in. Um, so it's just, uh, had a similar effect at the start as well until he fell out of favour. So I'm sure if um, if Manisar Roy was given the job, he probably would, would have gone a, a, a similar fate where start well and then when the results start to go bad, then we have a different, you know, a change, change, change of opinion. So it's just a matter of um, time. Time will tell if it's the right, right man or not. Ah, indeed, indeed. Mm-hmm. Christoph, what says you? I mean, what was your impression of that match? Chelsea coming away with a point there over at Old Trafford. Could it have been better for Chelsea? I mean, Chelsea have been playing some decent enough football. Manchester United, of course, getting rid of Ten Hag. Ten Hag being sacked. Ruud van Nistelrooy, interim manager, taking charge. And he seemed to have galvanized the squad. Uh, lots of emotion on display, it seems. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure... <laughs> about that, the team. I mean, farmer, to, farmer player, you know. <laughs> to me, to, I mean, they've had farmer player managers before. Ruth Van Nistelrooy, Ryan Giggs, you know, Scholes was uh, assistant manager too. So, uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So, um, <clears throat> hard to say, hard to say. Uh, maybe they're trying to copy Arsenal. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but no, I th- I thought the teams were relatively evenly matched, and when I say evenly matched, not in the sense that both teams were excellent, more in the sense that both teams were awful, in my opinion. Um, poor poor finishing, poor shooting and display. Uh, I I think the right result was reached. One all draw. Neither <laughs> team did did enough to come away with the points. Yeah, definitely uh, a number of chances being missed in all honesty and Manchester United really fluffing their line circle. They seem not to be able to find the back of the net. A lack of composure in front of goal, it seems. I mean, uh, Rashford hitting the post. Uh, Garnacho had a number of decent opportunities to really get a goal or even put the goalkeeper under some serious pressure. But again, you know, ball trickling into the goalkeeper's hand, lack of power in the shot, rushing. Ah, uh, what's going on from a striking department circle? Is it just a lack of confidence? Or are these players not good enough? And Ten Hag was the scapegoat that took the fall. No, well, if you look at goal scoring statistics, whether it is per team or per player, the top teams will convert at less than 30%. 
the top what players. What Manchester United is, is 18th in the league circle in the in terms of scoring goals. They sit number 18th in terms of the least yeah. number of goals scored in the league thus far. Yes, because the problem has not been finishing so, um, as much as it, as it has been creating. Um, they, re they really ha have not been creating the number of chances that they really um, should have. So with less chances, mm. then they really have less, less you know, opportunities to, to score, which I think has been the Achilles heel of this team so far. I mean, Chris Wood from Nottingham Forest, Sir Cole, is currently old score in the entire Manchester United team. It, it, so what's the cause of this lack of creativity, Sir Cole? Is it the players? Is it, is it the coaching tactics? Well, um, I, I will put the lack of chances coming down to to coaching tactics because it is the manager's job to get the team to create chances for the persons whose task it is to score. If it isn't creating, then it's a manager's job. If the team is creating and the player is not scoring, then it's a player problem. If, if, if you're not scoring and chances are being created for you. So I, I think at this point, the the the, the, crea the creativity was um, was lacking. Um, this game, after the last two games, without Ten Hag, I think the team has shown a lot more purpose going forward and have created a lot more chances, whether or not we, ha we have scored them or not. More to come under this new coach than Christoph. What, what says you? What's your early impression when you heard this announcement, Christoph? Uh, Amarin is the, is the coach, uh, current coach of, uh, is it Sporting Lisbon? I'm not sure, uh, over there in the Portuguese league. But he is the man that has gotten the job and he should be taking charge of the team i believe sometime next week when uh the, the league break for that international uh break in the fixtures what's your er early impression though christoph i mean I, the, I the key really... thing i've been seeing is that he plays three at the back can so, manchester united cope with that sort of tactical shift in terms of formation I mean, you can cope with almost any formation. It's just a matter of, you know, players understanding the rules and the functions of their formations and their positions. You, you could play with one, but one they five, have the five. current and players who are capable of slotting in, especially at those wing back positions. The manager has to know that. I, mm. I, I don't know that. The manager must know if he has a preference to play that style and he wants to come to Man United and play that, then he will either have to get the players at his disposal to play that. He will need to pick a formation that suits the players or he will have to wait until January or in the summer to make some signings. I, I don't know. The manager has well, to Estando. know. Estando, um, is that a philosophy where he only plays that or, or is the style that, that he has um, played at Sporting Lisbon only? Well, from what I've seen, uh, I mean, every single game he has a formation where it's three at the back. Uh, predominantly, I believe 120 of his games have been 3-4-3 three, three, or 3-2-1 three, three, but it's always three, or it's a case of him playing like a three-five-two formation. Fine, but, so, but it, all it, games it, have been three at the back for sure. Three at the back. Yeah. Has he, has, has he managed um, before before going to going to sport in Lisbon? Ah, to be honest, the, the history I've seen, he has just been at sport in Lisbon. However, I believe he was managing at another uh, Portuguese uh, team before. Braga, okay. I believe. I believe he was at Braga previously before uh, moving on to Sporting Lisbon. So I think his managerial history is based solely in the Portuguese league. Uh, probably two clubs at the, the, the top tier in, in terms of Portuguese football. And then Manchester United will probably be his third uh, top tier club. Part of the manager's job is to teach as well. So... If he has mastered the, the system or uh, has a clear idea of how he wants the, the, the players to play, then it is up to him now to get the players to do so. It is not for us to say who can and, and who can't. It's, it's for the players at his disposal to adapt to the style that the manager wants. And then we, see, we, we, we can judge after but not say that he can't work before. So you're fully behind this managerial appointment then, Sir Cole? I've been fully behind all, all, all managers, sir. <laughs> Support my club fully. <laughs>
well, as you said, time will definitely tell. Time will definitely tell. But we move. We move, Christophe, and we move to Arsenal. We move to St. James's Park. Christophe, talk to us. Arsenal going down 1 0 to a rejuvenated Newcastle team, it seems, Christophe. Talk to us about that game. What was your impression of that loss that Arsenal picked up over the weekend? Um, <clears throat> I don't, I don't know that it was a rejuvenated Newcastle team. I think it's it's probably too early to say. Um, it didn't help that Arsenal probably played the wrong starting eleven, and then <laughs> Arteta potentially took too long to make changes to mm. affect the game. In what my would opinion. have been your your starting eleven though, or what was the wrong selection in that eleven, and who would have been a better call? Um, so one of the biggest issues in that game is that the, the Arsenal press was being easily bypassed by Newcastle. Um, the change I would have made is that Ben White would have started in the right back and Thomas Partey would have been moved into to midfield. Um, back at the base of, of, of the midfield as he's been playing all season, he's been excellent all season in that role. He's, in my opinion, been been Arsenal's best player so far this season. Um, mm, but Arteta could have been forced into that move, Christoph, by the fact that Ben White have been coming off, or is coming off an injury. Hence, he didn't start the game. Fine, I I I understand that that could be a possibility. But he was sitting there watching the game progressing. He must have saw that something needed to to change. And something that we've talked about is that managers have access to five substitutions are not and are not using them at halftime to to change game plans or effect change in the game. They're still waiting on that sixty fifth minute to to make changes or beyond. Um, and I think that is what one of the reasons that cost Arsenal the game. Ultimately, they took too long to make those changes that could have had a, a more positive effect on the game. As well as there were some players who were underperforming in the match, as well as misfiring, in my opinion. You know, Martinelli, Declan Rice, namely, uh, poor performances, in my opinion, from those two. Trussard, poor performance, but... The biggest thing in that game was the lack of, you know, forward passes into the opposition box, in my opinion. They're really, it, it's really showing that, that, that Odegaard shaped hole in the midfield at the moment. So, um, <laughs> so I mean, it sounds as if Newcastle came with a plan and that plan worked to perfection, Christoph. I mean, I remember it's two teams on the park and it seemed as if Newcastle locked up this Arsenal team and really limited their chances going I mean, forward. New Newcastle definitely came with a, a plan of action, but you know, I mean they were helped by the fact that Arsenal shot themselves in the leg. So mm. plan whether they, plan or no plan, Arsenal hindered themselves. And of course that cross came down the left side. I mean, no Zinchenko, but similar result, Christoph. I mean, what's going on on the Arsenal left? Are we seeing Better results when Zinchenko is actually in the team. I didn't see any better result with with. with I mean, last team. year when Zinchenko was playing, Arsenal had the best defense in the league. What's going on? I mean, it's it's the one change which Arteta has made this season in terms of the defensive lineup. Kimba is the man being selected. No, the center backs are the same. Right side, Ben Blanco was there last season, is there this season. The only change I've seen is the left side of the Arsenal defence. And it seems as if the defence is now leaking, like a sieve. Um, with no Zinchenko. Technically, Arsenal have conceded the same number of goals last season as they'd have so far this season in mm. the same number of games. So I, I don't know that that is the case as yet. You know? oh, we, so we it won't... just means nothing on Forest and Liverpool have definitely stepped up their game defensively then? Right. Mm. Ah. A way, a way, a way of interpreting that, you know, could, could, could very well be that they probably, that Arsenal will probably have conceded the same number of goals, but probably in less games. As opposed no, no, to, same, no. Same, no, 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 same I, number I, of games. I, 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 mean, I, for, I mean, for example, if, if they conceded three goals, mm -hmm. Arsenal is now conceding 1-1-1 one, 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 as opposed to conceding three, three in one game. So over time, it, it does read, read the same. But right. the way you interpret yeah, it yeah, is, yeah. is no different. 
Yeah, I so get I, because saying. last year Arsenal would probably have, have had more clean sheets, but now the clean sheets are being broken while the number of goals is still the, the same. And personally, I, I think that last year the defense was way better and it still had, had the, um, the great the, 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 the in Jenko. <laughs> <laughs> well, time is the master, circle. Uh, right. Time is the master. I mean, I, I, last year we had Zinchenko, but last year Arsenal also had a, a relatively fully fit squad. Currently, Arsenal have had um, an injury crisis at the beginning of this season so far. No, but I don't see any major players being missing through injury uh, apart oh, from Odegaard. No, it's one player, player. Players keep going out every week, coming off in games injured. Gabriel. Ben White, Califiori, team, but no, 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 uh, no. I mean, Arsenal have been suffering <laughs> a, a injury crisis. Well, I mean, oh, look at City, but look at City, Christoph. If, City if, have if, been suffering as well. Hey, hey, if this was Liverpool, we wouldn't have this argument. Liverpool would be in full all injury crisis. All teams have injuries. All well, teams I mean, have injuries. Oh, all teams, indeed. All teams have injuries, yeah. Mm. Indeed. So, but, so but, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not unique to Arsenal. City, City, City is only now suffering some injuries, you know. They... they they have been with a relatively full squad for the majority of the game so far. It's just well, now I mean, that their they, big they are creator, so their big creator has been out all season, almost to the who, who is the players. Their well, biggest well, players well. are out. Well, well, Kevin Ra De Bruyne, Rodri is out. And Rodri, uh, no, he he went out against Arsenal. Kevin De Bruyne, same thing, but Kevin De Bruyne started the season. Yeah, I think he played maybe yeah, one or two games. Out. He started the season. I think uh, Odegaard has season. probably played more games than De Bruyne. No, Odegaard has played less games. Man, De Bruyne went down injured before Odegaard went in went down injured, oh, and De Bruyne hasn't been back since. De, Bru De Bruyne went out injured against Arsenal. Um, Odegaard has been injured before that game. Well, two big players though, but it seems as if City is coping better with the the the. That piece being missed, though, Christopher. No, I mean, but your season can't hang on C one player being injured. No, you're not hanging on one player, but City have two squads. <laughs> well, I mean, no, that man, didn't stop board mode from. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> City, City, ha squad, sir. City has what? two has two mm. two starting eleven, and uh, if you recall at the beginning of the season, I said that Arsenal did not buy enough cover for these key players that could potentially go out injured. And I, I remember highlighting Odegaard and Saka. Mm. So are we now seeing that mistake playing out in real time? Um, In my opinion, yes. I think they're, they're suffering the <laughs> suffering the, the, the lack of acquisitions in the summer. And I, I fully understand, you know, a, a club not wanting to overspend on players and wanting to get the right players in. But um, at some point, you must have some plan to replace your key players when they need to be rotated, um, rested, you know, or in the event somebody goes out injured. There should be some, some fail-safe in place. There, but, there um, is a plan, uh, uh, but Arsenal doesn't trust the plan. Yeah, because I'm seeing where Edu Christoph jump ship after the Newcastle loss. Big sporting director Edu is no longer in the Arsenal camp. Jumping ship after Arsenal went down 1 0 to Newcastle over the weekend. What's your take on that move? Will I mean, that have a detrimental impact on this team going forward? I, I can't tell. I, I don't know what effect it will have. Uh, Arsenal could replace the sporting director next week. You get a, a better one or you get a worse one. I don't know. Mm. But I mean, he is the man who have really put together this squad that has been challenging over the last two years. Still no trophies. Arteta is now there five years, is it? And only an FA Cup to show? Is he the, the mirror image of Athena, Christoph? I mean, at the end of the day, trophies is what count. And you might be finishing second, third, challenging, but you're still not going all across the line. You're still ending seasons trophyless. What, what what and this season is Arsenal now out of the title rates after ten games? I mean, um, well, I think it's what nineteen points of a possible thirty. I don't know that they are out of the title race, but at the end of the season, closer to the end, these are these are the points that you would probably look back on and say, hey, you know, if you didn't drop points here or here, then you know the title might have been a certainty versus you know. 
fighting to final day again or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't think that it, it's still too soon to count out Arsenal out of the title race or count out um anybody else at the moment. So you're still confident Arsenal can take the trophy this year, Christoph, as was your prediction earlier in the season? Uh, at the moment, I'm uncertain of them. Because <laughs> so you're saying been... you've lost some confidence over the over the first ten games of the season? Then I, I, they, yeah, they have they have lost my confidence. They started out excellently; <laughs> they were doing well, but you know, um, I'm not sure. This game in particular is is was very questionable for me. Um, it's it's the first well, game. It doesn't get any easier going forward. They have Chelsea next. Well, the the reason why is this game in particular is because um. Other games that Arsenal have dropped points, it's it's been because they've received some red card or poor refereeing decision. This is the first game where, you know, I'm just seeing poor play overall. Um, didn't see anything from the referee. I, I thought it was just. <laughs> oh, so finally, Arsenal get a clean game then, and finally. they came up short. <laughs> finally, it but, seems um, as if the ref need to ref against them, Christoph, for them to get a result. Um, like I I thought I thought like I said I think um. In my opinion, Arteta must take the blame for this loss. That being said, you know, the players are still on the field and can contribute to a win. But Arteta made the, the wrong decision, wrong starting lineup, and then took too long to effect the game, in my opinion. So I think I lay the blame at his feet for this one. Ah, indeed, indeed. The, the, that's where the, the buck lies. The buck lies with the manager and Arsenal going down 1 0 to Newcastle. But speaking of title race, ah, Sir Cole, Bournemouth taking care of business versus Man City. Talk to us, Sir Cole. I mean, shocking result to say the least. Yeah, very. I don't think anybody would have expected um, a win for. Uh, I mean, for Bournemouth, but uh, they fought and they got their results. Uh, one thing is certain, City will give you chances. No, it's a matter of taking those um, those chances. And even though City managed to pull one back, I mean, they still they still fell, fell, short, fell short in the end. So very good defensive display as well by, by Bournemouth. And congrats to them for taking the chances when they came their way. Uh, definitely a deserved win, I would say. It wasn't a fluke, in my opinion. I mean, Bournemouth did play some good football in that match. Uh, Cart City on two very excellently taken goals as well and had a very stern defensive display. Uh, Harlan blanking again, no goals. Now we now seeing a shift where defenders have now figured out Harlan, Christoph. Are we seeing... Haaland leveling out, so to speak? Um, I, I, I definitely think probably defenders have seen the template of how to, to stop Haaland scoring. But like I said, Haaland's drop in form and goal scoring always coincide with Kevin De Bruyne going out injured. So mm. that is also a factor. Um, just look well, we did see season. De Bruyne on the bench, so possibly he might be back in, in action in the Champions League coming up midweek or on the weekend. Potentially, and you know, when De Bruyne comes back, you'll see Haaland return to goal scoring form. But without De Bruyne, his goal scoring always drops off. Um, he always goes on a drought. Same thing happened last season, same thing happened the season before that. So, one way of stopping Haaland then is cutting off the supply line circle. But, no, but has I mean, the supply lines really been cut per se? I mean, we see the likes of no. Phil Foden, uh, Bernardo Silva, these are creative players which have gotten the business done in the but, past. Check the check the stats. The stats will show you that Haaland had a number of big chances missed. So he really ha has been getting the chances still. He, he, he just ha he just up to him to uh, not be converting as, as he normally did. Is that not really a supply problem? The chances mm. have come. He has not <laughs> put them away as he normally has. And we have seen in the past where De Bruyne has been um injured for an ex extended uh, period and he still he still got goals anyway. So it's more a uh, or personal issue, I think, than that really a, a team issue. I'm not saying I'm not I'm not saying he he doesn't score any at all without the Bruyne. I'm saying there is always a drop off in the goal scoring from Harlan when the Bruyne goes out. 
Mm. Big drop so off. We are, we're seeing that drop off currently then. We're, and... we're seeing the, the, the drop off. And you know, watch when De Bruyne comes back, you will see Haaland scoring again. You're expecting an uptick in Haaland's farm once De Bruyne is playing regular football then. Yes. Mm. I, I, my, my opinion on it is even without even without De Bruyne, he will return to squ- to scoring farm anyway. No, not that he won't return to scoring farm. I'm saying he scores more with De Bruyne. Mm. He struggle. He struggles <laughs> ah, to score without De Bruyne, but he he can still score. I'm yeah, not saying yeah. he can't score. I'm saying there is a big drop off without De Bruyne. Indeed, indeed, and of course, Man City picking up their first loss of the season, so that intent on going invincible no longer exists and I saw a number of Arsenal fans celebrating over the weekend because of that fact that seemed to be the only thing Arsenal fans are hanging their hat on these oh, days Christoph that, that, that invincible was, that, season that was that was City was never going to be invincible that was never going to happen. I don't well, know what just... <laughs> we did we did see Leverkusen I, I... do that last season so it's not beyond the realm of possibility Bundesliga and EPL is not the same well yeah, well, that is true. I mean, we, we've Italy also seen team. Juventus do it we've over there ex- in the Italian ex- league ex- as well. Exactly. We also know that Juventus tends to pay off um, <laughs> some people, right? <laughs> we, we know that. No, I, I'm not to take away from their accomplishments, but mm. people like, to, oh, Juventus did it in that league. Fine. Leverkusen did it last season in their league. Fine, yeah, but league. those, those leagues, the overall quality is weaker than or the overall competitiveness is less than in the EPL. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, definitely, I mean, Bournemouth deserve winners. And of course, City will be looking to bounce back. I believe their next fixture should be against Brighton. Uh, but definitely, it seems as if this, this title race circle is wide open. I mean, Liverpool seem to be the team... To beat at the moment, I mean, with Arsenal losing, Man City losing, Liverpool getting a win coming from behind to beat a stubborn Brighton team circle. What's your take on that game? Did did Brighton let Liverpool off the hook? Well, uh, we have to see. Liverpool has really been performing well, um, better than I think many persons expected, considering also that they really didn't do much in the transfer market. So, Slot has started in uh, very well. Um, yeah, for, for Brighton to have taken the lead and then to have let it slip, you, you, you would have to, you know, um, most times chide them. However, Liverpool really has been playing some good stuff and they really rallied and this, this is one of the games where you're looking back come season end it could be a uh, de- defining um result in terms of w- w- where the title goes ah definitely i must give credit to that midfield trio uh youngsters like jones really coming to the party and putting in some quality performance he had another sublime game uh, versus uh, Brian over the weekend. I believe he supplied Salah for that winning goal. And it was a magnificently taken goal by Salah. Where would Liverpool be, Christoph, without Mohamed Salah? That is indeed the question at this point in time. Uh, that's a good question, but I think people are, you know, kind of um, maybe underestimating this Liverpool team. Um, yeah, they didn't do a lot of um, business in the transfer market, but I think that has been to their advantage. Um, there has been no disruption in their squad. And, you know, quickly people seem to forget that Liverpool led the Premier League for the longest last season, battling it with eight <laughs> games to go. You know, so it's... It, ah, well, I, I wouldn't I am necessarily not, say battle. I think I am it not, was down to a three-horse race last I season. Mean, it was a three hard three, but then Liverpool you know, proceeded to lose three games in a row and yeah, drop out of every I mean, competition. We could, we could say injuries are pretty much. Oh, so all of a sudden, injuries, injuries, injuries are season. important. Okay, <laughs> interesting, interesting. But um, well, no, I'm not. I'm not surprised by Liverpool's performance mm. um this season. That they they are performing as I have expected them. Like I said, I think the question mark for Liverpool was how would the manager um handle right, this right. team, you and know, the new league, new right, league. following up Klopp, so to speak. I, I think Klopp had kind of checked out last season, so somewhere 
you know, halfway between halfway through the season, he probably checked out, to be honest. Um, but last season Liverpool performed well um and people seem to forget it. It's just that they were leaky at the back. But had Liverpool, you know, probably had a better defense last season or the defense performed better last season, they would have probably taken it, you know, all the way to final day or even had won the league last season. So I, uh, I assembly. Yeah, because thought, it's the same. It's the same personnel you now being utilized by Slack. It, right, it, the, the defense. The defense hasn't changed. The defense much, hasn't changed. I would what, say. What I would say is that Slack has just is playing probably a similar type of player to to Klopp. He's just more conservative defensively versus and probably um, the midfield tree in terms of the dynamics has changed somewhat. I mean, last season we saw a lot of endo. Now this season we are seeing Gravin Birch, we are seeing uh, Jones, we are seeing McAllister. So to me, that may have been the, the key change which Slat have really brought to this team in terms of the dynamism in that midfield tree. No longer do you have a specialist number six or a specialist defensive midfielder. You're, you pretty much have ball playing uh, players who can do a bit of defensive work but can also uh, navigate the ball from off the defensive line and move it forward. So, to me, that has been the key change, in my opinion. And, of course, that man, Gravin Birch, at this point in time, he has to be play off the season circle. A, a, a man which was unknown last season, but has now taken the league by storm. No. <laughs> Gravin Birch cannot be play off the season. <laughs> I mean, after 10 games, I'm saying after 10 games... No, but, but still, <laughs> the, 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 after, right, 10 games. after 10 games, who would be your player of the season? Salah has to play of the season over Gavin Birch. Mm. Well, well, after 10 times, it's Salah. attacking players who get the accolades. But to me, is, is Gavin Birch is the bias? man who has been doing the dirty work in that Liverpool midfield. Really, you know, breaking up tackles, winning challenges and progressing that ball forward. So the likes of Fasala can shine and shine brightly, so to speak. But often time, these are the players who don't get much fan fear. But really, if you take them from the team, it's no, a man, if you're, different team you'll be seeing. If you're, if you're very good, you, you, you do get your stripes. Um, AK, uh, for example, we, we see Rodri. We have seen the past players like Kante who have taken that kind of a role by, by Storm. So... Um, Gavin Birch really and truly isn't at that level quite yet. He still has a, a, a way to go. <laughs> well, I think he is there, to be honest, circle amongst the best. Uh, it's just a matter of time before the, the big media start to highlight him. But here on beating the press, we are beating the press to that. And I think Gavin Birch will emerge as one of the top talents in the league come the end of the season well, when the awards are being noticed. handed out. Notice the names I've mentioned have done it for their club as well as for their country. So far, well, he has done it for club nor country. So <laughs> he, still, he still has a long way to go. Time is the master. <laughs> time is the master, indeed, indeed. What yeah. number of other good results? Uh, Nottingham Forest continue their rise. They are now sitting in the top four. Uh, Sir Cole, I mentioned previously that they have been my surprise team of the season. And their good form, their good playing continues. Uh, a quick comment on that. They got the better of West Ham. Three goes to nil. Really taking it to West Ham after West Ham went down to 10 men. Yeah, well, for me as well, they, they have been um, my, my surprise team. I, I wouldn't have, have expected them to have been this good. What it seems though is that they're, they're defensively very solid while being able to convert the a few chances that, that they that they would have um, created up front. Chris Wood from his days at Burnley has been able to thrive off few chances per game and has been coming down in a system where he does get a, a, a bit more. So with him being able to put that ball in the, in the net and, and the defence holding firm, not really allowing even more than, one, more than one goal per game at maximum with, with that conceded, then it, it, really, it really what has spurred them to be so high in the table so far and the table does not lie. Uh, indeed, the tactical genius of Santos is really now embedded in this team. His DNA is all over this Nottingham Forest team, uh, Sir Cole. And as I mentioned in a previous podcast, when you look at the squad, it's a lot of players who have been deemed not good enough at bigger clubs. 
that are now getting the business done for Nottingham Forest. When you look at the likes of Ilanga, former Manchester United man, uh, Callum Hudson Adai, former mm. Chelsea man, uh, James Ward Prowse, previously of West Ham. So it's a lot of players. Alex Moreno. Pl Alex Moreno, surplus to requirement mm. over there at Aston Villa. So it's really a squad of players deemed not good enough who have galvanized themselves, who seem to have found the right chemistry, the right blend, and are now really reaping the rewards of some good tactics well, and some purposeful football. Very much so. And the thing is, especially defense, defense is really a team effort. It's not, it's not, it's not a individual effort or just the, just the backline effort. Defense is a team effort. And if it shows that it shows how well the, the entire team is chipping in and blending to create that, that defensive solidity that they need to not to not, not concede goals. Uh indeed, indeed. But Christoph, any final thoughts as it relates to this weekend uh of football action? Arsenal going down, you know, we must highlight that a big defeat there. And of course, similarly, Manchester City picking up a defeat in the same game week. Your final thoughts? Um, yeah, Arsenal going down. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, a, a loss has been brewing for quite some time with Arsenal just dropping points in the last two games before this. But I think um, much bigger was the, the City defeat because City were outplayed by, by Bournemouth. And, you know, this is... Um, Quite shocking, I would say, but I mean, if 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 you go back some weeks, Arsenal played Bournemouth with with ten men and and played to a draw. So City getting outplayed is is quite shocking. Ah, stranger things have happened, Circle. Stranger things have happened, but Circle, your final thoughts as it relates to what we saw over the weekend. Well, I think the most fantastic performance that we saw over the weekend actually came this evening with. Harvey Wilson coming on as a sub and snatching two added time goals for um, Fulham over Brentford. I think the, the first goal is a contender for possibly goal, goal of the season and two very well taken strikes by, by, by a sub coming on and making a manager look like a, a real genius. So hats off to him. Ah, definitely. Quality strike there, a little back heel flick, I would say, you know. Uh... Yeah. Reminiscent of possibly a Juru of the past, it seems, or a, 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 a Berbatov type goal who was doing these friction tricks on a regular when he played for either Manchester United or Tottenham Hotspurs. But another fantastic week of football, gents, is now over. Thank you again for passing through and, of course, sharing your thoughts and your opinions. Viewers and subscribers, thank you for continuing to support the channel. We have now grown to over 400 subscribers and it is through you uh, that we have made it this far. So please continue to share the podcast. Of course, continue to leave your comments. Continue to like. And of course, if you haven't subscribed as yet, hit that subscription bell. But until next time, this is Rafa signing off.